Good afternoon all. Today I want to test some uh, 74HCT138. How many have I got? I've got seven of them. Now they're all surface mount and they're on these little uh, SMD2 dip adapter boards. So I need to put some legs on these boards, put them in a breadboard and then rig up some sort of circuit which can test the HCT138. Now the HCT138 takes um, three bits of binary on pins one, two and three. So I'm going to generate that using a little ripple counter. This is a 74 uh, LS, oh actually, yes, LS393. I'll need a 555 as a clock. Um, and then those three bits are converted into a one of eight. So eight of the pins, I think a lot of the top pin, all of the top pins apart from VCC and one at the bottom are output. So I'm gonna put LEDs on those. And as this thing counts through its eight counts, I'm expecting to see each LED turn on in sequence. What I'm really looking for here is chips that may have been fried by the uh, process of reflowing the solder. And for that, I've been using this light bulb. So they have been getting quite hot. Um, I'm also looking for po problems with solder bridges. Now, obvious solder bridges uh, like this one is obviously solder bridged on pins one, two and three. That's going to cause a problem with the binary count. That's obviously not going to work. Obvious solder bridges I will wick away before I put them in this test. Uh, circuit but yes I just want to test all seven of these make sure that fundamentally they're working um, and that I can carry on with my 8-bit uh, computer project. Right I'm going to need a 555 timer um, I can use a bipolar one there um, I'm going to use a bipolar 555 this is LSTTL this is HCT which is HCMOS but with inputs that are compatible with TTL outputs. So the HCT138 is going to be quite happy um, being driven from the outputs of the LS393. I might even put some resistors between the outputs of the 393 and the inputs of the um, this chip because if there are solder bridges underneath I don't really want to be shorting um, one of the outputs of this chip which might be pulling high to another of its outputs which might be pulling low. Probably get away with that with TTL but even so I'm going to put 1k resistors I think. Um, between these outputs and these inputs. Right, for this 555, I'm going to need a pot. Let's go for a 104. Um, now that goes between pin, pins 8, 7, and 6. So that sits there. I need a capacitor, pins 1 and 2, little link wire going across. Let's just get the 555 oscillating first. Right, that should uh, oscillate, that 555. So let's get some batteries, get four of these Allen loops and uh, put them in here and just see whether that works. Is that an inner loop? What's that one? Then? Oh, that's an inner loop light. Well, it'll probably work. Let's shove it in. I'll change it for a full strength inner loop uh, shortly. I just want to see whether this works. Let's power that up. No, it doesn't work. I think I think it might be because on this LED I've soldered the uh, LED uh, the resistor to the negative leg. So let's turn that round. Good, right? That's flashing on and off. So now I want to use the output of that pin three, which is where my LED is, to start driving the uh, LS three nine three, which is a well, it's actually an eight bit ripple counter. I'm only going to use four bits. So I'll only use one side of the chip. I will need a printout for that though, uh, for the pin numbers. Okay, so while that's printing, uh, let's cut a few bits of wire. Let's just straighten that. Cut um, some bits of wire for VCC. Oh, they're probably a bit short. VCC and ground of the LS393. Let's do that. Right, so the LS393 is a 4-bit, uh, well, a dual 4-bit binary counter. It's got two completely separate 4-bit uh, ripple counters here. Um, so what do we need? We need clock into pin 1. Well, that's nice and easy because pin 1 is right next to my 555 output. Uh, clear looks like it's active high, so we need to pull that Oh, low. I need to pull that low because I don't want to clear the chip. And then um, A, B, C and D, which are on pins 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now, I don't need the least significant, um, so I don't need 6. I'll only need 3, 4 and 5 they will go off into the 138. But just for the moment, I can put LEDs on these and watch that binary count. 
Right, so that should do it. Um, I've got my 555 going into pin 1. Pin 2 is pulled low because that's clear and we don't want to clear it. Right, we'll need some um, LEDs with resistors on. So I keep my LEDs with resistors on in here. We need three to look at the three bits. Well, actually, we could look at the four bits. Um, oh, we've got some weird ones there. That's got a 1K on it. I don't want that. Uh, let's look at the outputs of this. Now, where's my resistor? Is it on low? Yes, it's on ground. So I want ground to uh, that output. Yes, that's running at half the frequency of that. That's good. Uh, also want one on the next output. That should be running at half the frequency again. And another one. Is that also resistor to low? Yes, I think it is. So we've got three bits there and we can see that uh, they're doing a binary count. The right hand one is most significant. The left hand one is the least significant bit and that one's falling out. Oh, I said I was going to do four bits, didn't I? So um, there's the uh, next bit along. That's the least significant bit. So now you can see that it's counting from zero up to 15. When all these four LEDs are on there, it's 15. And when they're all off, it's zero. Um, so I only need the first three bits. Now I'm going to uh, put those through onto the, LS, uh, the HCT138, as I say, through 1K resistors, just so that there's no uh, possibly a possibility of um, shorting output. So let's get some resistors. Oh, the other thing I need for these are some uh, header pins, and then I'll plonk them on those and solder it in situ on the board, I think. Right, here are some header pins. That's a 16 pin chip, so I need uh, eight, which is there. Let's snap off eight. I'll need another eight, which is there. Let's snap off another eight. Now these can sit, um, now it's going to be one pin out, isn't it? Well, it's quite tight. I'm just wondering whether that actually went down the wrong side of a, of a piece of metal, but anyway, we'll see. Let's put those in as well. And yeah, they are quite tight. Maybe these pins are quite thick. Uh, okay, so we really want pin one. Let's start with one that doesn't have solder bridges. I don't think this one has any solder bridges. So let's plonk that on there. And now I have to get my soldering iron and solder all that up. Right, just while the soldering iron warms up, I just wanted to take a quick look at the... Um, LS138, actually I've got an HCT138, but the logic's gonna be the same. Uh, so we've got here A0, A1, A2 on the first three pins. Now they just happen to be the same order as uh, pins three, four, and five on the 393, because uh, as you can see from the lights here, the least significant one is, well, let's take the piece of paper off, the least significant one's on the left. So I'll just link those through uh, in the same order. Now we've got three enable pins. Now this is very naughty because E1 and E2, I think I've got bars over them, but you can barely see them because they've merged in with the line work of the pins. Uh, but you can see here that um, pins four and five are inverting enables, so they need to be pulled low. Uh, pin six is a non-inverting enable, so that needs to be pulled high. So lows on four and five are high there. And then seven is one of these outputs. Again, the bar, these are active low outputs. Uh, so there is a bar over 07, but you can't see it because it's kind of merged in with the square of that pin. Uh, so these will pull low. So I need to sort of turn the LEDs round so that um, we're sinking current down to ground via these outputs. Okay, we'll wire all that up once I've soldered the uh, header there. Right, so I'll solder this with it in the breadboard. Um, it's probably the best way to do it because it means the pins will always be in the correct orientation. Probably not ideal that I've actually got the power on, but of course I've got no linking wires to this chip at the moment, so that doesn't really matter. Okay, those are the front side pins soldered. Now I'll do the rear side pins, which are gonna be harder. Right, so let's bend these wire links over my pliers because that's roughly the right size. Now I said four and five, didn't I? I'm gonna have to go low, so that's four. Let's bend another one of these over my pliers. 
and that can be pin 5 also going low these are the enables slightly more tricky is pin 6 because I haven't actually wired up the positive rail down here so I might just jump it over to the positive rail up there right let's get some uh, 1k resistors I'll need three to bring the signals from the uh, counter here or, yeah the ripple divider over to the three inputs and I'll need a fourth one to pull up pin six so that uh, all the enables are active right that's three resistors to take the um, signals into the three inputs I've got another resistor there pulling up pin six now these are going to go low in sequence um, so let's try one of them up here this pin here I'm going to have to hang it off VCC and we should see that light up uh, one in eight there it is and it should be on actually count seven no it's on count six. Oh yeah count seven will be the one down here so I'll populate all the uh, blue LEDs uh, so that they're being pulled down from VCC and we should see them all sequence in turn uh, right that's three of them in and you can see that they're going in sequence let's put another one in there if I can get it across that gap and if I can get the legs to go in the breadboard oh, it's not the best quality breadboard is it right that's four of them let's put another one in which will go to there that's five of them I need seven up on that top uh, thing the one at the bottom is going to be slightly more difficult because I haven't got any VCC down here okay let's just put two more of these in I'll get in will you that one and that one and we can see that uh, they're all switching nicely in sequence just one missing down here let's get that one in and uh, there it is that's the uh, eight blue LEDs all switching in sequence uh, I might get a smaller cap speed this up a little bit and I'll certainly get in closer right let's um, use a one microfarad there's actually a, a 3.3 in there so let's pull the 3.3 out and it stops flashing of course let's put the one microfarad in oh yeah that's a bit quicker um, and that's it that really is my test circuit to see that the HCT138 is working uh, two low enables one high enable the three bit count which are the first three LEDs here and the one of eight pulling low on those outputs it'd be quite nice to put that one up the top wouldn't it so that they all run in a sequence but uh, yeah that that tests that that works so yeah the um, the one that I uh, reflowed I think this is the one where I had to do some uh, remedial work with the soldering iron and the wick to just pull away the solder bridges but that chip certainly works so I'm happy with that now I've got to uh, go through and test all of these mm, seven chips yeah let's just move this VCC link here across one. Oh, that's interesting it kept working even with no VCC let's look at that yeah look at that no VCC on that chip and it still works fine how can that possibly be it must be getting uh, VCC from somewhere else actually that's quite weird isn't it right I've slightly uh, laid it out differently so that I've got the eighth blue LED at the top there I've run a couple of linking wires around to pick up pin seven and route it up there uh, don't really need that fourth LED showing the fourth bit because uh, we don't need a four bit count we only need a three bit count this is um, three binary bits being decoded by this chip into one of eight uh, active low outputs right so now I really need to get on and test these other ones now there's not much point putting in something like this which very obviously has pins one two and three uh, bridged together there are other bridges on here um, and also there's not really much point having outputs bridged together because only one output is active at any one time so that's just going to deliberately short um, one output which is high to another output which is potentially the opposite polarity that's not going to do the chip much good so I will wick away um, any obvious 
solder bridges uh, before I start testing these other chips. Right, I've just uh, soldered another one, so that's ready. These are very tight in the breadboard. They're extremely tight. I'm going to have to lever that out with a screwdriver. Uh, right, that one's been levered out, but that's still working fine. So let's take that one out. Um, now it's that way round. And I've got to get uh, VCC and ground in the right place. Let's put that in. Let's push it right home, actually. And that one, having wicked away all the obvious solder bridges, is also good. I uh, just want to stare at it for a few seconds to make sure each of these blue lights is coming on. They are all lit, and of course they're very obviously in sequence. Yeah, so that one's also good. Two out of seven are good. And uh, here's the third one. Now I'm keeping track of which ones I've tested and which ones I haven't because of course the ones I've tested have now got um, header pins on them. So that one looks fine. Yep, yeah, all eight outputs are coming on in sequence. Let's do another one. Right, let's do the fourth one. Now this one probably has the least uh, solder on it. This one, I went very light um, with the solder paste. So yeah, you can see the step on all of those pins as it sort of steps down onto the pad. Very little solder on this one. So let's Plug it in. Uh, obviously no solder bridges on this because there wasn't enough solder to create bridges. Let's pop it in. Uh, oh, something's not... Oh, that's frying. Yeah, that's getting hot. <laughs> Let's switch that off right now. Something's burnt. Oh, that's a real shame um, because this one, I really wanted to see whether this one was going to work. What I've done here is these chips are annoying because they've got no little uh, indent so you're really working with the lettering and all I've done is I've actually put the chip the wrong way round. So VCC and ground completely back to front um, because I've actually got pin 9 where pin 1 should be. So the chip was just completely the wrong way around. And as I say, that is a real shame. Um, I will flip it around to see if it still works. It probably won't. Well, wow, that's actually pretty extraordinary. Um, it's still working fine. And that's despite... A really bad smell, uh, smoke coming out, and what looks like a little sort of heat blister mark. That's extraordinary. That is actually still working. So, I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's a pass. Obviously, this chip I would never put in a uh, functioning unit because it's been well cooked. It's probably sort of very melted inside there. But, um, yeah, I mean, from what I'm uh, interested in, I just wanted to know that uh, all eight outputs are running in sequence, and they are. So, yeah, that's a pass. The chip's burnt, but it's still a pass. Right, so I've written on there um, a big one and a big nine so that um, I know at a glance that this chip has actually been placed the wrong way around on the little board. I wasn't really worrying too much about that because um, I was more interested in the actual technique of getting the solder place to reflow. I don't think on some of them I was really caring that much about um, getting pin one alignment right. That one was definitely wrong. Okay, let's plow on. Right, let's plug this one in. This is the fifth one. <laughs> the right way round, which is that way round. And that one is also good. Five out of seven are good. Okay, in goes number six. Again, just double checking the orientation of the chip. In it goes. That looks good. On to number seven. Right, okay, let's do the last one. In it goes. That way round. That's working fine. So, seven out of seven. Here they all are. They've all passed. Um, even the one which I reverse polarity. I mean, they're obviously fairly tough little chips, aren't they? If you can reverse polarity it for three or four seconds, and it still works. I might put that one back in, actually. Let's do that. Uh, yes, remarkably, that's still working. But for me, the most important thing is that heating these chips up with this lamp, and incidentally, uh, it cracked across there because it all probably got a bit hot. Heating them up with this isn't damaging them, as far as I can see. Um, my solder paste technique isn't creating bridges under the chip where I can't see them. Um, when I was using too much paste, it was creating bridges where I can see them, and I've wicked all those away. But uh, yeah, I think for um, just making up these little boards, I mean, I'm not saying this technique's useful for general purpose 
SMD work, but for just making these boards quickly, um, it's fine as far as I can see. So yes, I'm going to push on with this uh, sort of mini project of making uh, surface mount chips on these little boards so that they can go onto breadboard. Now, of course, the next stage is to use these. Now, I've got a feeling the JEDEC ones were the wider ones. These chips, which are strictly speaking too wide for the pads on this board. So what's going to happen is that the solder is going to kind of uh, flow under the sort of underside curve of the legs. And you're not going to be able to see the pad extending beyond the leg because it won't. The leg will extend beyond the pad. So I'm relying on the solder paste sort of soldering underneath the chip where I can't really see it. That's really the issue here. That's why I'm doing this. Um, yes, I mean, this is the V1.0 board. You can get a V2.0 board, or at least there are photographs of them on eBay. But when I tried to buy them, I contacted the seller. I said, will I be getting the V2.0 board? What are the dimensions? The V2.0, you can tell because it's wider. It's six tenths of an inch across. This is only five tenths. And therefore, it has the, the longer pads which extend further out. Uh, the seller came back and said, oh, sorry, we've um, listed it wrongly. We've only got the 1.0 boards. So I don't know how easy it is to get the 2.0 boards. So yes, I'm going to put the wider chip on a board, which strictly speaking, can't accommodate it. That's why I want to use solder paste. So yeah, I'm going to push on. But uh, for the moment, testing of all these chips is good. Cheerio.